going to draw a just like an organic bumpy wavy line going across your paper relatively in the middle then you want to create some more of the same types of lines they should not be the exact same because in nature everything is um, like I said more organic so some can have like more hilly of a look some can be a little more flat all right so if you look here I drew one two three four lines this line right here the very first one that I drew that is called the horizon line this is the line that separates the ground from the sky now we're going to begin painting this in and we are going to use tints and shades so remember a tint is when you have a color mixed with white and the color becomes lighter a shade is when you have the color with black and the color becomes darker so our goal here is to paint light to dark I have a paint palette and I'm going to use violet as my color so notice my paint palette I just have violet I know it's a little dark but this is violet I have white and I have black I don't have every color of the rainbow because you're picking one color only this is monochromatic one color my color is violet and the only way I'm changing that up is I will mix it with white or I will mix it with black to create tints and shades make sure you have a placemat and I'm going to use a larger paintbrush for this step and I'm going to paint in my sky with a tint so I have a piece of scratch paper here that I'm going to use to do my mixing on because I know eventually I'm not going to have enough space to do all this mixing on the tray so I can do some mixing on the tray or just use my scrap paper now the sky has to be my lightest color here on the entire piece so atmospheric perspective we're looking through more of the atmosphere as it goes back into the distance so it's going to appear a little foggier and lighter not as vibrant so that means i'm going to be using a lot of white because i have to paint in that entire sky shape and it all needs to be the same tint so i'm getting a lot of white in there and i'm only going to use a little bit of this violet i don't need a lot because I need to keep it light. If you use a lot of that violet, it might get too dark on you. So this should be the lightest color of your entire painting. And you're simply gonna begin. So you wanna make sure you have the placemat because you are painting all the way to your edges. That way you um, don't get paint on the table. Drag your brush, treat it nicely. I like to slow down as I reach my pencil line here. And I just am using sort of the corner of the brush to make sure this line is nice and smooth as I go across. So you're barely seeing a difference from the white paper to the paint. That's pretty good. That means I mixed a pretty light tint. Now notice I'm painting fast, but I am still dragging it. I drag it across, I flip it, I drag it back. I'm never pushing it, pushing it, or scooching it. You never want to do that. So here's the tricky part. I thought I mixed enough paint, but I didn't. I still have about a quarter of my sky to paint. So I need to mix that exact same tint of violet, which this is the hardest part. It's trying to match that color again. So I try to work kind of quick before everything dries on me. So that way, if I need to feather in the new color with the old color, I can while the paint is still wet. Now I think I did a pretty good job trying to match that. But that will be one of the obstacles you will face during this assignment, is trying to match those colors. All right, now when you paint, you want this to be as smooth as you can get it. So I don't want it to look super scratchy. And again, that just means you're gonna need more paint on that brush. Don't be afraid to use the paint, especially for these big shapes that we have to fill in. All right, so there's my nice, beautiful sky. Now next, I'm going to make another tint but this tint is going to have more violet in it so I'm still gonna get a lot of white because it still has to be light but now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this violet and mix it in with the white so this should be darker than your sky make sure you get a lot of paint so you can fill up that whole section all right so compare the new color to the old color if you need to get 
just a little bit more. Like I think I needed some more violet there because I just felt it was a little too light. All right, now this part's gonna be a little trickier because this shape is so much smaller. So I'm gonna be extra careful here with my paintbrush. If you need to switch out to a thinner brush, you can. And the goal, right, where all of these are gonna meet, you really wanna try to make these nice, smooth transitions. So they shouldn't look super scratchy. Notice how I'm using the tippy toe in my brush to kind of just make this line nice and clean. So now what I'm going to do in the next section, this I'm going to do just pure color. So it's not gonna be mixed with anything. So I'm just gonna dip the brush right into the regular paint. So this is our easiest section here. All right, so now I'm gonna be moving into my shades. So I have tint, tint, pure color, and then shade, shade. Now on my brush, um, I have, I still have some of my tint and the pure color, so I need to rinse because I don't wanna mix um, the tint with the black because that creates a tone, and we are not doing tones for this assignment. So I'm rinsing my brush here to get a clean brush. And what I would do is definitely use a paper towel or a sponge to soak up some of this water that's on the brush after you rinse. Otherwise, it'll make your paint really runny and it'll start to look like watercolor paint. So if you need to get a new piece of scrap paper, you can. I'm just gonna flip it and use this side. So I'm done with white, no more white. Now I'm gonna focus on the color with black to create the shade, but I don't wanna get super dark too fast. So I need to use just a little bit of black with the color okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scoop my color out more color and then i'm just going to grab a little bit of black put it into the color and mix it up all right now i need just a little bit of color mostly black i don't want us to do just plain black because i feel it'll be just a little too harsh. So definitely have a little bit of your color in there. Now, because I chose violet as my one color, violet gets dark really quickly because it's already on the dark spectrum. So it's very hard to tell on the camera, but in real life, this is darker than the one that came before it. All right, so now what we need to do is make sure you have everything painted in Check your corners and your edges because those always be, seem to be the spots that people miss. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to start begin making some trees. So this should be pretty dry before you start that process. So you might need to let it sit until next class or if we have a blow dryer available, we could use that. Um, but you wanna gauge like where you're at. So my top, the sky is already pretty dry. The paint does dry quick. I can tell this bottom part isn't. So I'm gonna be very delicate here for the sake of the video. And you want to explore different paint brushes for your trees, okay? So I grabbed a few. I have one flat brush and then two round ones. One is thinner than the other. And I'm gonna try and figure out which one I prefer for my trees. Now I know trees far away are gonna be smaller. So, if I look at my brushes that I picked out here, I'm gonna say maybe not this one. This one's a little too big. So I'm gonna go with my round ones. I think I'll start with the big one and then make my branches with the small one. Now, I'm gonna make trees coming out of this layer here. So I need to make this color again. Luckily, because I'm working fast, it's already still here for me. I don't need to remix it. But you might have to remix it, and this is where it gets hard. You gotta find those right proportions again but it's all great practice. Okay, so you're gonna determine where you want these trees and you're gonna draw them. If you feel the need to draw with a pencil first, you can. We had a day to practice painting trees before this assignment, so I don't feel the need to do that because I've already had some practice. Now, I don't want them to be too big because they're in the background. They're really far away. Now, because these are the ones farther away, now I'm gonna grab my little skinny brush all right, so when I do the trees, just make sure 
Like remember how we learned to start with like a letter Y and then you start building from that, make more letter Ys. Now because these trees are far away, you don't want these branches to be too thick. You wanna keep them relatively skinny. So I'm just really pressing the tippy toe of my paintbrush down onto this paper. I am not, if you look over here, I am not pressing down like that. That's too much. Just get some paint on the tippy toe and barely touch the paper. Really gentle strokes here. Now to make sure these branches really look nice and clean, you are gonna have to make sure you have enough paint. So I notice I'm running a little low on paint and the edges are starting to look like a little dry brushy. So they don't look smooth It's because I don't have enough paint anymore. And I'd have to remix this color. Sometimes I even like to dip my paintbrush just a little bit into the water to loosen up some of this paint that's drying on me. And then that kind of can help smooth out some of my edges here. All right, now that my painting has dried a little bit, I am going to go ahead. And now I'm going to be making trees that are coming out of this layer. So this is my pure color. So I'm just going to make my stem and do the same process. And I like to kind of feather out my bottom just in case this does, um, this dries like a little different of a color. So it kind of just looks like it's sitting there on the ground. And it is okay for your trees to overlap. That actually will make it look more realistic because that's what happens in real life. All right, now these trees are gonna be a little bigger than the trees I just painted. So I'm keeping with my thicker brush and I'm gonna start making my Ys, my letter Ys. But again, I'm just using, I just have paint on the tippy toe of the brush so I don't make these branches too chunky. Feel free to go off the tops of the papers. Don't be afraid. Look, I'm gonna even overlap. This guy's going right on top of that other tree. Okay, so I am going to now take my little brush and extend some of these out just to get them a little smaller and create more of these little baby branches on the ends. Okay, so I am going to now take my little brush and extend some of these out just to get them a little smaller and create more of these little baby branches on the ends. All right, now the final task that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some more trees here on the shade portion, so now I have to mix, again, my violet with that black and try to replicate um, this layer here. So I have, I'm just gonna do this one right on my tray. Since I ran out of space on my paper, I will do my best to try and remix this color. And if it's not exact, don't get too concerned about it. Just get as close as you can and then keep making more trees. Now they're gonna start getting bigger the darker you get because now they're in the foreground where those little trees, those are background trees. Things get smaller as they go back into space. So I want you to look at this edge of the tree here. I don't like that, it's a little sloppy. So please, if your starts to look like that, take the time to try and smooth that out. You don't need to move too fast during this process. Take the time, make everything look great. Now notice how this tree here on the end is so tall. So don't try to fit all your branches on the paper. Let them go off the top. It looks more interesting when you do that. Okay, and again, I'm just transferring back to my little brush to make the edges a little thinner. So painting's always like a dance. It's just a back and forth. Color, brushes, making the marks. All right, now I think I am going to stop here. So I'm not gonna make trees coming from the very bottom layer, just because um, I think I have enough going on, but if yours doesn't look too crowded, you can definitely add one more layer of these trees, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And then any sort of adjustments you wanna make, obviously make them. 
other than that you'll just leave it to dry and this is your atmospheric perspective landscape showing space showing value light to dark using tints and shades